As the world grows, as global growth shifts, even if it shifts from west to east, we are particularly interested these days at Chatham House to try to integrate our capacity to look at research on regional issues, on resources issues, on economic issues, on security issues, and pull them together to tackle problems that governments have to deal with in a joined up way. Faster and quicker than we ever expected, China and India have risen. In the West, Western governments, Western companies, we are ill-prepared. We're ill-prepared in terms of our policy, in terms of our knowledge levels, in terms of our ability to deal with the impact this will have on our economies, on our global politics, and on our environment. There's a strong debate about America decline and America declinism, and we're trying to actually look at, is that true? How do you pass that out? In what areas is America declining? Is it declining in and of itself or relative to other countries? Africa has become a particularly interesting testing ground for this new post-Western political order. It's moving past an era when it was beset principally by problems and seen to be beset by problems. And it's now moving into an era potentially where we could start to see real economic transformation and as importantly, political transformation. This year has been one that has witnessed some enormous changes, momentous changes in the Middle East region. Change has been a long time coming in that region. What was unexpected was the level of anger that manifested itself on the streets uh, of Tunisia and Egypt and expressed itself in non-violent terms. What we here at Chatham House are also trying to do is look at how a changing environment will affect the ability to distribute, generate, use power. It's great to put in a smart grid, but if you put it in a flood zone, you're not really that much further ahead. And our resources futures projects are about connectivity, choke points, trade, making sure this world can really move resources around the global economy in an effective way. Of course, the snag in the way is that oftentimes it's not the fact that we're running out, but the fact that we worry that we may be running out that could be causing some of these problems. We face this dichotomy between global markets and national states. Who speaks for the global economy is very difficult. It's not the IMF, it's not the World Bank, it's not the government of the United States, nor the government of China, but we have markets which actually interact with a, a much larger reality than that of a sovereign state. The world's changing. It's absolutely obvious. The fundamental political, economic story of our times is the rise of Asia, the rise of China and India. And we will only be able to deal with that uh, with good knowledge and good analysis. <laughs>